Hi everyone, hope you are doing well from whatever you are watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now there is a case in court to do with the uh, house levy, where uh, Kenyans are challenging the state for from collecting the house levy. Of course, the court had referred to this one as unconstitutional. Then we know the matter was taken to the Court of Appeal and in the Appellant Court, the case is going on. The ruling will be rendered on 26th of January this month. But above all, the state was seeking for a stay order yeah, so that they can continue collecting taxes. Uh, uh, sorry, the state was seeking to remove a stay order which was already put there in place to stop the government from collecting the house levy until the matter is heard and determined. So, according to the Treasury, they say that the stay order can plunk Treasury into a financial crisis. So, as they wait for the decision, they have to allow they trusted to continue collecting this money. I look at that and I ask myself a question. It can plunk the trusted into a financial what? Crisis. To finance what? To finance what? <laughs> so after serious threat and intimidation that Ruto was directing to the judiciary, a ruling has been made yesterday and we have now to continue for those who are paying eh? they will have to continue paying house levy the house tax will be there until when the case will be heard and determined on 26 so it was shared in the people's daily kenya they gave a headline Kenyans to continue paying house levy. So for those who are, who are employed, whether you like or not, you will have to continue to pay this tax. But one question comes in. What made, made, made the, what, what, what informed this kind of ruling? We saw threats from William Ruto. And if you have heard such kind of language, threats from the head of state then you have such a ruling how can you say that this was an independent ruling without considering root of threats but surprise is that i am seeing kenyans being surprised with the kind of language ruto is using today then you wonder <laughs> why are you surprised ruto is not new he's a known man who does not have a stand, who keep on changing, he will always speak as long as there is something favoring it, him. But when he does it, when, when something is not favoring him, he speaks the opposite. This is a man of double edge. And for those who are surprised, it is good you go and listen to what Ruto said when Maraga made a ruling on presidential petition that did not favor Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta. What did Ruto say? This is a man who used to threaten the judiciary from the word go. He is not new. What he's saying is not new. He said it even when he was a deputy president. He has had his day. Ours is coming. And by the way, that is not a threat. He has had his day. He has done his game. Our day is coming. So we have to understand Ruto. When things are working for him, it is hallelujah. When they go against him, it is the opposite. For example, the other time, when Ruto had issues with the Huru Kenyatta, where now people like Matiangi were being given more duties and responsibility than him. Just like what he's doing to Gashagwa. Mdavadi has more than Gashagwa. 
Ruto was not happy. By that time, we know we had individuals in that government that were not following the rule of law. What was, 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 what was Ruto saying at that time? Alisema Manin. <laughs> that Jubilee Party and the Jubilee government was elected on a, a democratic uh, uh, way where they follow the rule of law and it was clear that court orders are not just pieces of papers they are a law so law should be respected the constitution should be respected the court ruling should be respected that was again William Ruto, a man of double edges. Every public official must know that the Jubilee administration is a democratically elected government on the basis of the rule of law. The constitution is not a book, it is the law. Court orders are not pieces of paper, it is the law. And therefore, we want every public servant to understand that the basis of our democracy and the basis of our nationhood is the respect for the rule of law. The slide to anarchy and confusion and impunity and dictatorship starts when we do not respect the rule of law. Every public servant will be held personally accountable if they do not respect the rule of law. There is nowhere in the Jubilee administration the president, myself as deputy president, or any part of this government does not believe in not respecting the rule of law. Now you have heard it from William Ruto. The slight to anarchy and the confusion and the impunity and dictatorship starts when we do not respect the rule of law. <laughs> yeah, look one upon a threat. Now we are seeing now people are making some ruling in his favor. We have seen this ruling now here today. He has to continue collecting tax. The question is eh, what is your expectation on the final ruling of this? If the court can allow you to collect taxes on something that the other court had ruled that it is unconstitutional, then they will allow you to collect taxes pending the court ruling that will come on 26. What is your conclusion on that ruling? The obvious is that there will be a possibility of this ruling favoring William Ruto. A man who has told us that the constitution is not just a book but the law. A man has told us that court orders are not just papers but law. But it's still the same man who was reading Maraga. Then he came with this one. And then later, the other day he was threatening the judges. Now he's referring to judges as a tyranny of judiciary that is colliding to stop his agenda. And therefore, there is deep corruption in judiciary. Individuals are using judiciary to stop him. He has promised to deal with them. So, he has made his threats serious. And we can see the kind of ruling we are having as of now. It is against the people, but in the interest of the man who is threatening the judiciary. And we said here, even Mother Kome cannot defend the judges. Whatever she was giving in this point of this was just a PR statement. The man who can do so and walk the talk was Maraga. For Maraga, his word is his bond, even up to death. How in Guinea, Piera, Kelele, Kujifanya, Nakuwanekana Nikama, they are in control, but indeed they are not in control. If Mother Kome was in control. I don't think there will be such kind of a ruling coming out today. This ruling can confirm what Kenyans have been saying that judiciary is under capture. 
the judiciary is under capture. Do we still have hope in the courts that we will get justice? When a president stands out, make threats, then a ruling comes in in his favor on the same matter that was talking, then we are waiting for another final ruling, what you expect. So, I don't see any hope in the final ruling that will come on 26. Kama wa makubalia, isa lakali ikusanya usuru kutumia isheri ambayo ruto wa mesai. The bill, 2023. Uh, House Levy. How comes you come and threaten the judiciary at a time when you have sent your people to the court to go and appeal on a ruling that was made. In Amanisha, the threats were in preparation to, 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 you know, it was in a preparation for the upcoming ruling. So that when the judges will make the ruling, they have to consider your threats. <laughs> Sasa huu uamuzi ambao tumepewa leo ni kulingana na zile um, the zile the threats that Ruto gave was it informed by Ruto's threats or by the law Swali ndio hilo That's why Kenyans are saying that in this year of the Lord 2024 is a year of protest, mass action, demonstration, and rejection of this regime. They are determined to deal with us. And even the courts will not render justice to us because they have already captured the courts. That is it. So, Ruto ni mutu wa aina hiyo. Different statement, double standards, and all that. It is his nature. If you have such kind of a president that you cannot predict, and I say my question is, really, how can you trust such kind of a leader that Mukona president? It can never happen.